Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin'. It's D. Boss Your Exit. It's Vib by Naomi Cannibal. This is Bad Girls. The greatest social experiment that never was. Um, I watched the first uh, maybe five-ish seasons of uh, Bad Girls Club, but it just got tired after a while. They just came in the house just to fight. And I was like, all right, this is just corny. You know, it didn't feel authentic anymore. It felt like people were just trying to start stuff for no reason. They started bullying each other, and it just wasn't entertaining for me personally anymore. But, um, you know, I know people love it. People always ask me to react to Bad Girls Club, like compilations and stuff. I can't. It gets copyrighted, like, really heavy. I've reacted to quite a few on my Patreon, so, you know, some of them are up over there. But, yeah, on this channel, it's, it's a no. So, anyway, let's see what's going on with this uh, this video, though. Let's watch. Hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back oh, to my girl. channel. So today I actually want to talk about <laughs> Bad Girls cute. Club. It's been off the air for about five years now, but since re-watching it on Hulu and just, you know, becoming an adult since it's I've so seen cool. it, I've kind of realized that they've missed quite a few opportunities with the show. So I do want to cover some things like what it was like to live in the Bad Girls house, what the girls got out of it, and why production was messy and belongs in jail, all of them. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and I like her videos. Y'all go support her. The show could have been a great I'll social put the link in the description to or video. even a great social experiment, but instead it's only known for its insane fights and memes. Mm -hmm. In this video, I want to break down several aspects of what living in the bad girl's house is like, the culture that's created within the house, and some of the missed opportunities totally. that the show had to actually reform the girls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that the original point of the show was to reform these so-called bad girls and make them into better people. Strategic casting is part of what makes Bad Girls Club Bad Girls Club. The goal is to find seven bad girls from all walks of life and put them in a house together. Producers aren't searching for the seven loudest, baddest of the bad girls, but for a combination of girls that will create conflict and make good TV. It seems like this is a mix of girls who want to fight for the sake of fighting, some funny. more laid back personalities, minions, we'll and girls who like to throw rocks and hide hands. Lauren from Bad Girls Club 6 said production intentionally casted girls who they believed would fight or provoke other girls into arguments. I might say more than five. In later that. seasons, the show casted girls who had internet drama with each other and were enemies before even being on the show together. Oh. Winter from season 16 said that she was intentionally yeah. cast on the same season as Z since production knew they'd argued previously on Instagram when she accused Z of copying her tattoo. I've also noticed that there's typically a disparity in the girls' upbringings. The show seems to purposely pair together girls who had rougher upbringings with girls who are spoiled princesses, seemingly in hopes that conflicts will arise from it. Mm. The show clearly leans more towards casting these girls with rougher upbringings because they're less likely to oh, have had sure. healthy examples as far as conflict solving and therefore often resort to arguing or fighting. Oh, wait, maybe. Oh. According to the official Bad Girls Club wiki, the girls are thrown in the house and are there to coexist and must tolerate everyone in order to make it to the end of the season. They accomplish this by staying in the house without being removed due to physical fighting. When the girls arrive, there's usually a honeymoon period and they all get along and bond and enjoy nights out. Usually, if there's any drama really early on, it's because one of the girls didn't get the sleeping arrangement or the room that they wanted, or they said something kind of out of pocket to the girls on their first night in the house. But inevitably, one of the girls or a few of the girls do something to upset the others and then the factions form. Typically, it's usually a three and four kind of half and half split, but sometimes it is one or two girls against the entire house. The girls take these factions seriously and will bully any girl seen as being a traitor to her group. There's no respect for the girls who want to remain neutral or want to be friends with everyone in the house. These girls are usually called fake or flip floppers. And I feel like some of the girls did stand on their own because they truly didn't need to hide behind the other girls for strength. Others, I do agree, did play both sides. You can't mention teens in the Bad Girls Club without mentioning the two teams that form every season, the original girls versus the replacements. Mm -hmm. No matter how I'm much the original me. girls might hate each other, they almost always hate the replacements mm -hmm. more. <laughs> Some girls in the house went as far as vowing to never be friends with a girl before even meeting her just because she's a replacement. On multiple seasons, the original Bad Girls do initiations to the replacements to show them what it's like to be a bad girl mm -hmm. and live in the house. These can include hiding the girl's belongings, throwing her mattress, or icing her out and ignoring her. It's interesting to point out that by doing this, the bad girls admit that living in the house is awful, but they're the ones responsible for making it that way. Right. It's as if the original bad girls see the replacements as automatically inferior just because they've spent less time in the house. There is real psychology oh, behind threats. why the girls do this. 
Regardless of whether the original girls like each other or not, they still form what's called an in-group, and even though they may not like or trust each other, they're still familiar with each other. The girls who are replacements form what's called an out-group, and since they're outsiders, mistrust arises. Fear is also one of the most common emotions that arises from mistrust. The originals likely aren't scared of the girls in the house in like a monster under the bed sort of sense, but in that they're unsure of in what ways the new girl will disrupt the norms established in the house. Because of this, the girls typically ostracize the newcomers in order to assert their dominance and protect these norms and themselves by extension. In addition, several people derive personal value from having a group mentality. Having an us versus them mindset creates a scenario in which you belong and are accepted, and this is emphasized further by the fact that there are people who are not accepted. Wow. In addition, humans are susceptible to in-group bias, in which people believe a certain group that they belong to is inherently better than the opposing group because we don't tend to think of ourselves as being on the inferior side. There are several cases, though, where bad girl replacements refuse to be mistreated because of their status as replacements. Camila from season eight did not let the girls intimidate her despite her status mm -hmm. as a replacement. She often showed good. the girls that she was not one to be messed with and made it onto several spinoffs of the show and became more popular than some of the original bad girls. Will Marie from season six was also someone who showed the girls quickly that she was not going to be intimidated or bothered despite the girls antagonizing her several times. Though some replacements were ostracized upon their arrival, it didn't make them immune to perpetuating that behavior when other replacements arrived. Elise was treated terribly by most of the girls in the house because of her replacement status, but as soon as there was another replacement, Elise continued the same treatment. And it just goes to show that a lot of people are okay with being made inferior to someone else as long as they perceive someone else as being inferior to them. Yeah, so. In general, the girls were just holed up in a so mansion where they drink all day other than when production let them go to the club or get their nails done. Spending a lot of time drinking and being in such close quarters obviously increased the likelihood that the girls would fight. They were allowed to make landline phone calls to friends and family members and had access to a shared computer. Seven from season 17 said production told the girls on her season that the experience was probably the closest they'd ever get to being in jail. It's still not exactly clear to me where the line is drawn as far as fighting goes. There oh, were times when all out brawls happened or the housemates jumped another girl and didn't get sent home. Even oh. in some mutual fights, one girl got sent home for taking it too eyeballs. far, rather than them both being sent home for fighting in general. For example, Wilmarie and Nikki had previously I'm fought in the Nikki. house, and Wilmarie even hit Nikki with a lamp, yet neither were sent home. Really? Nikki also started the altercation that ended up getting Wilmarie girl. sent home, right but she was still allowed to stay in the house. Oh. I think Christina fought in every episode she was in and still made it through the majority of the season. I didn't mind sometimes when she put Julie in her place, though. It oh, also seemed like the producer sometimes let it slide when one girl had clearly been provoked, like when Jayla hit Lauren after an argument stemming from Lauren using the N-word. Production also allowed the girls to be oh, jumped God, several times good. across the seasons, the which I personally good. think should be an automatic elimination. I think the most brutal jumping was from season 8 when the Victor twins got jumped. Gabby had later said that production annoyed. told them it was going to happen before it did, and basically just sent the girls into a room to get beat up. But even when the mm -hmm. girls attacked someone who wasn't fighting back, they were sometimes allowed to stay. An example is when Alicia and Valentina, who are absolute losers for this, threw stuff on Janae and hit and kicked her after she was already leaving the house. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the worst things I've ever seen on the show. I think one of the lamest moments in reality TV history is when Britt attacked Delilah. Like, Several of the other girls in the house went for Brett and she did not get bold with them in the way that she got with Delilah. And that just irritated me because it was so obvious that Brett was looking for an easy target. And I think she just wanted to show off, but it clearly backfired because her ass got sent home. It also drove me crazy how the show was so lax about the girls touching and destroying each other's property. It yeah, always seemed dumb to me off. that the girls in later seasons even brought expensive or designer them. items in the house it's after seeing how previous shit. girls' belongings were treated. The worst case of this was by far in season 14 when the rest of the girls in the house destroyed Shannon, Sinead, and Jayla's belongings. The three girls left for a night out and when they returned they found their belongings all over the house mm -hmm. and damaged with water, paint, and urine. One of the twins urine? claimed that combined it was over $200,000 in damages. On Tumblr, Jayla claimed the situation was even worse than what had been shown on camera and production did nothing to help them. She said, no one will ever understand or be able to wrap their heads around what happened to Shannon, Sinead, and I. Yes, girls in previous seasons have had their things touched or thrown in the pool, but never permanently destroyed. Tonight's episode would be like pulling an old scab off of a wound. This situation has affected our lives forever. 
It was funny and it may be entertaining to watch, but it's really not. Do you realize that the water Shannon pulled shoes and purses out of was full of their bodily fluids? No one tried to stop her from touching that contaminated water. That was a health risk on its own. Mm. Did anyone acknowledge the fact that they let a security guard attack me? Or how about them not answering the phones when we called production? How about when we had to run into the street screaming for help because they kept cutting the phone lines and when 911 was called, they told them never mind. We all went to the hospital that night. I resprayed my arm and that still hasn't healed properly. Dude. They paint us out to be these superficial and stuff up bitches when we really weren't. This the majority terrible. of the time we spent in the house, we had to defend our character and our natural being against girls that were from a different side of the tracks. Why would you go on the show, though? This Despite being the ones whose belongings were destroyed, Jayla and the twins were kicked off of the show for threatening the other girls. When they saw their damaged things, they went into a rampage and destroyed the house. Jayla said that if they could, they would have succeeded in burning the house down. She said they knocked out several windows, pulled the fridge out of the wall, and basically ruined everything in sight. Jayla said if production wasn't going to do anything about their belongings, then they'd at least have to pay to repair the house. Apparently, it was Mel B, a.k.a. Scary Spice's house. In the aftermath, the twins and Jayla sued, claiming that production knew what was going to happen and did nothing to stop the other girls. She also said that she and the twins were manhandled and threatened by the security guards during the altercation. Mm. Jayla and the twins were actually some of the first girls to sue the show in 14 seasons. Several of the previous girls who planned to sue have been discouraged, other than Kristen from season 5, who have been drugged on the show. Not only had it been caught on camera, she also ended up getting in a fight while under the influence. Kristen was actually removed from the house for fighting with Leah. Kristen said, I had no idea where I was and I had to go to the ER overnight. They later discovered someone put PCP in my drink. They can't show it on the show because then the guy could sue for slander. I'm honestly really upset they didn't explain that during the show. I think it's really messed up how the entire story wasn't ever shown on air. Whatever. Done. Luckily, Kristen was able Done. to obtain the footage from her lawsuit and settled with production. Though a lot of the girls in season two came to the show because they wanted to be on television, a lot of them actually were there because they wanted to better themselves. Throughout season two, the cool. girls were required to maintain jobs, and if they didn't do their jobs, they were eliminated. Season two is probably better remembered for Tanisha Thomas's appearance and the several altercations she got in with the girls in the house, which were great for ratings. I get no sick of y'all. Oh, get a of me. Season three added the Bad Girls Club Creed, which was a bad girl knows what she wants and how to get it. She makes her own way, makes her own rules, and she makes no apologies. A bad girl blazes her own trail and removes obstacles from her path. A bad girl fights and forces her way to the top with style and beauty. A bad girl believes in jumping first and looking later. People will love you. People will hate you. Others will secretly wish to be you. A bad girl is you. So right. <laughs> While a couple of the earlier seasons had slightly more of a focus on reforming the bad girls, nearly all of the others seem like there's no purpose other than having the girls fight for our entertainment Literally and then well, cry about how they came to the house to change. They can't change when they're living in a party house with endless alcohol and no structure. It's not like production is encouraging them to grow and change either. Erica from season nine said that the very night that they arrived in the house, awesome. it was stocked with every type of alcohol imaginable. Production often spread rumors amongst the girls to start drama or made girls participate in that drama in order to receive a good edit. Wow. Some of the girls have also said that producers didn't send girls home for fighting as long as they constantly stirred things up in the house. In season seven, it was actually producers who told Judy to throw cereal on Priscilla. On the Bad Girls Club Wikipedia page, it says, if the cast members engage in violence or break other rules, they are considered for eviction under the show's policy, which is enforced by the producers. So that does make it seem like there aren't any hard and fast rules for getting kicked out, whether it's just left up to the producers, and I'm sure that they did play favorites. Production also had a habit of allowing the girls to be dangerously violent and turning a blind eye the despite recording it. In crazy. season seven, Shelly put bleach in Astasia's eye contact solution. This was caught on camera, though no one on the production team stopped Shelly from doing it or stopped Stassi from wearing the contacts. Instead, it was another girl in the house who warned her. This resulted in Stassi going home a night early after beating the brakes off of Shelly for contaminating her contacts. To put the show back on the fixing the bad girls trap, they she added life it. coach Laura Barron in seasons 12 to 15. Girl, life coach Laura has made her rounds on other reality Oh, I thought it's clear even... when she's... To you. To you. No, it's disrespectful. To you. I didn't see her season, but I saw this. I might have watched a uh, compilation on my Patreon, too. I don't remember. As an IMDb page. So. Her personal website says that she's sought of regularly by the media for her expertise. 
Laura's only real purpose on the show is to make the girls bring up their trauma for the audience's entertainment mm -hmm. under the guise of it being things that they want to work on while in the house. It kind of makes me wonder trash. why they went for a life coach instead of a licensed therapist. Laura proved pretty quickly that she was not above belittling the girls or fighting with them just to get her little TV moment. Wow. And she also seemed like she was picking the girls apart with one, no sympathy, and two, no actual constructive intent. Laura was an unnecessary addition, and I think it was an attempt to justify the show being on the air for almost a decade at that point. Also, it is so clear that so many of these girls are struggling with some sort of Judy. substance problem, and it's enabled just so that they'll make good TV. For example, Judy should have been removed from the house. This she clearly awkward. had a drinking problem, and they honestly use it just to get funny moments and fights out of her. They would also sometimes use it as a plot point that they acknowledged in moments where they wanted to make the show seem serious, but nothing was really done about it. Not only did they do that to her on her original season, but they also continued to invite her back. The most they did was put Judy and some of the other girls on drinking limitations, but there's no word on how strictly these were enforced. The girls barely got paid to be on the show. They made about $500 a week, which is around $2,000 a month. What? The girls had to buy their own food while in the house and pay for nights out when production didn't take care of it. Oh, this is If they did things production didn't like, they were donked. Danny from season eight said that she lost $350 of her $500 weekly check just for refusing to put on a shirt. Aside from that, they probably had their own personal expenses to maintain, even though they weren't working while inside the house. I hate this lipstick girl. So the pay definitely isn't worth it, especially if you're putting your career on the line by being on the show anyway. I do feel like if you plan to show your entire ass on the show, it is smart to have a plan to make a career in social media or something similar. Because a lot of the girls have said that being on the show has severely limited their career opportunities. Mm. Even some of the girls who were on the show over or almost a decade ago say that the stigma of being on Bad Girls Club still follows them around to this day. Why am I still being talked about about shit that I did seven years ago? And then and you're just going to have to deal with it. And of course, I'm going to have to deal with it. I'm going to have to swallow it because that's a choice I made when I was 22. I regret it. 1,000% mm. regret it. So that begs the question, why is being on Bad Girls Club worth it? The only noticeable benefit is exposure. Many girls from the earlier seasons like Tanisha Thomas or Natalie Nunn have turned their fame from the show into a reality TV career. Tanisha went on to become a television personality and to host several reunions at the Bad Girls Club. Natalie hasn't become any less insufferable and is currently basically in the same place in life. Mm. Instead of tormenting other girls as a housemate, she's now tormenting them as the producer of the unaffiliated spinoffs, Bad Boys and Baddies. What? Once social media became more popular, many of the girls really? were able to angle their time on the show Nothing. into becoming influencers and musicians. Girls like Dream Doll, Winter, and the Claremont Twins have used their time on the show as a launch pad for a career outside of reality television, though they're still in the entertainer model influencer realm. While researching, I found out Elise from season 8 used a fake name on the show for this exact reason. Her real name is Katie Ann and she's a successful real estate agent. Another way I feel like social media ruined the show was that in the later seasons, production definitely tried to go for girls who had a big following just to get people to watch. It also became clear that the girls were going on the show just for the attention. On season 15, which was the sister season, Diamond and Olivia lied their way onto the show by pretending they were sisters. In reality, really? they were just exes who wanted their 15 minutes of fame. Wow. The reunions were basically a bonus episode of the show. The girls were invited to see each other one last time, usually several weeks or months after their season had wrapped. Some of the girls hadn't seen each other since the fight which sent them home, and often more drama had transpired on social media in the meantime. During the reunions, the girls were also shown footage they'd never seen before, and it often brought to light some of the other girls' shysty behavior that they thought they'd gotten away with. The most unforgettable reunion definitely has to be season 9, where Julie got doused in all sorts of condiments and juice, and definitely okay. got some brain cells knocked out of her head. I think my second favorite was season 12, just because I had so many stupid quotable moments, my favorite being when Lo asked Jada why her dress had a collar. Really, the reunions usually created more problems than they resolved. So, what was the point of Bad Girls Club? I don't even think the show could really answer that question for themselves. <laughs> I don't even know. As seasons passed, the show teased bigger fights and made theme seasons like East Coast versus West Coast and the aforementioned sister season to try to hold on to ratings. 
The show had no real premise and missed the mark on showing any correlation between being in the bad girl's house and intentional she said positive has, change. So I'm assuming it's not on. The show also missed the opportunity to take a deep dive into why women form the social groups that they do to the point where the social dynamics in the house played out more or less the exact same across 17 seasons. There's no commentary on social dominance or what makes some girls leaders and others followers. There's also no mention of what being essentially cut off from society with only a group of strangers to socialize with does mentally. The girls are sleep deprived and binge drinking daily, both of which increase the likelihood of conflict and bad decision making. The girls learn no real problem solving skills or how to deal with personalities different from their own. Having real therapists or life coaches interact with the girls or at least observe their behavior would have provided some insight into why these girls behaved the way that they did and would have given that the really show some sort of purpose. The show could have branded itself as an experiment on social interactions or mob mentality or female community building all of the wilds, admitted these girls would not have made it on a stranded island. The most entertaining yet purposeful route the show could have taken was making it into an experiment about how easily people can be influenced by a group, mm. especially young women prone to falling back into bad habits. According to psychologists, only about 25% of people are immune to engaging in a behavior just because their group is, which could explain why so many of the girls were prone to jumping each other and why so many of them very quickly looked for someone to follow while they were in the house. Even girls who claim that they weren't fighters typically found themselves in multiple altercations while in the house. It would have been interesting if instead of aiming to cast girls who were quick to fight, to cast five girls who weren't fighters and truly believe that they couldn't be brought to that point. The other two girls in the house could have been plants hired by production to test the girls and see at what point they would break or see how quickly they would take part if they witnessed violence in the house. The entire mm. show was unethical anyway, but it would have been nice to have people trained to deal with their behavior on set. It would also contextualize the girls' behavior instead of painting them as crazy or bad. Brian Lowry of Variety thought that the producers made the wrong decision when they created the show. He believed that the cast of Bad Girls Club auditioned for the show for their 15 minutes of fame, which, to be fair, is why anyone auditions for a reality show in general. Yeah. He said that Bad Girls Club arrived a little late in the game on a channel lacking the kind of exposure or public footprint to qualify the show even as the stuff that guilty pleasures are made of. I agree because, especially in the later seasons of the show, I just stopped watching because all the girls did was jump each other and argue over the smallest things. Personally, I feel like the show should have taken the too hot to handle route and created a sort of prize pot that. with all of the money and deducted it every time that the girls fought so maybe they would think twice about mm. fighting and then at the end they could either split the remaining funds with the girls who didn't get kicked out of the house but or give it to one of the girls wouldn't have who been as the entertained. most bad girl. The show could have been a nice study in tribalism or how women interact and solve problems together. But instead, we just got to watch girls in their 20s be drunk and fight their demons and each other day in and day out. There are several videos on the internet of former bad girls talking about their time on the show, and none of them have said anything positive about their experiences. Mm. Danny said the same, saying that every bad girl she invited onto her podcast spoke negatively about their time on the show. Unfortunately, mm. since it went off the air almost five years ago, I don't think we'll see any years? new and improved iterations of Bad Girls Club. Baddies and bad boys exist, and while they're new, they're definitely not any sort of improvement. I haven't watched either, but from all the drama and clips I've seen online, it doesn't seem any different. It just seems like more That's girls sure. and boys fighting for clout when they really need some help and some support. Also, I'm not entirely sure if it's for baddies or something else, but I think it's for baddies. And the way I've seen some of these former bad girls treating girls during these auditions, they're just being rude for no reason. They're so clearly threatened because that's the sort of fame that doesn't take any skill. It just takes one girl who's willing to put on more for the cameras to dethrone you. I also couldn't imagine being almost 30 or over 30 and continuing to affiliate myself with that show. Yes, I think it's great that girls who were on it are talking about their experience, but I think it's wild to go back for more. But still, I thought it would be fun to dive into Bad Girls Club because it's a show I watched for years and I know a lot of you guys did too. And I feel like my perspective is a lot different now that I'm the same age as the girls are older. So yes, that is it. Well said. This show was a hot ghetto ass mess. I had no idea that the conditions were this bad though. To hear that a lot of them came out and spoke about their experience after the fact and they were getting their things peed on is wild. I would have lost my fucking mind if somebody peed on my belongings. I would have went to jail that night for sure. So it's understandable that they went crazy and start breaking shit in the house when that happened to them. Um, and yeah, the, they could have, you know, turned this into a social experiment and made it more about psychology, but that wouldn't have been nearly as entertaining for most people. 
Most people like to see drama and chaos and fighting. That was the whole appeal of the Bad Girls Club. That's why people like to watch it, myself included. I just didn't like it to be constant. It's like, okay, I could take a little fight and a little ratchetry, a little chaos. But when it's overboard, it's like, all right, this isn't even entertaining anymore. This is just bullying and abuse that I'm watching. <laughs> like, Why am I watching this? So I completely stopped watching. Um, but yeah, this show was a mess. It's, it's unfortunate. I'm glad that it's off air because these women were literally like, like they said, they were in jail and in hell <laughs> these are hell conditions getting your ass beat getting your stuff ruined getting little pay like wh what is the point just so you can get some type of exposure and most of them didn't get any good exposure it's not like they're super successful dream doll is probably the most successful one maybe um but everybody else it it ruins you look at what that twin chick said she said that she regret even doing this Hot mess. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.